Hey folks, Kevin here, well it's November 8th, 2019. I'm outside, we've had a heck of a time trying to create videos recently. The sun keeps disappearing, but hopefully it'll come back out. Uh, winter's here, we're near Lake Ontario in New York State, uh, close to Canada, and winter's come here. And the big problem we have here is lots of overcast, lots of rain, lots of snow, and high winds. So recording these videos is a challenge. Uh, this video I'm going to talk about possibly being able to increase the rate of decomposition of your wood chips. Three different ways that I think potentially contribute to speeding up the rate of decomposition. Uh, and the reason I'm talking about this video is because recently I've had lots of comments and questions regarding a video that I posted. I think it was September of 2018, so just over a year ago. And it was, ask me anything, how fast do wood chips break down? And in that video, just pl please refer to that video, I'll put it in the upper right hand corner, uh, a link to it. And basically I just talk about multiple factors that I think contribute to the rate of decomposition. In this video I really want to talk about uh, what I think has changed, uh, what, what you can do, even if all those factors are held constant, there are three things that I've that I've observed and that I think have made a big difference as far as the rate of decomposition. So first thing I'll mention is here's permanent raised beds of our central garden right behind me here. This is the one with all the weed mats on it and the one over in the eastern garden plot is directly behind me here. And, uh, and there'll be a little bit of GoPro footage in a couple of minutes here as I'm talking showing me digging up some of the uh, of the material, the old wood chips that have broken down. So in on July 1st of 2016, I created these permanent raised beds and I posted a video on July 1st, 2016. So that's just three years and four months ago. And, uh, and those paths, which were probably anywhere from I'd say 28 to 36 inches deep of fresh wood chips that were pyramidal, very wide ones, and so that the top would be quite narrow, and in between each one of those paths were the, were the piles of compost that turned into permanent raised beds. I have not turned those, uh, those paths. I haven't done anything with the paths other than uh, yeah, pulling weeds out of it, which initially when the wood chips were there, no weeds grew up in those areas. But given the relatively narrow paths that we have with, with compost on either side of those paths, what we've noticed is the rapid rate of decomposition. Now when I say rapid rate of decomposition, I'm talking about getting to the point where, where, the, uh, where the soil that is, that is formed as a result of breaking down all of those wood chips is actually fine now that we can go ahead and turn that up onto the permanent raised beds themselves. Now our wood chips are pretty coarse. I've talked about this in previous videos. A lot of times the, the sticks are, are uh, several feet long, the, the, the small branches because of the way that the wood chipper, the, our main uh, source of wood chips, his tree service uses a wood chipper that really doesn't break it down into fine particles. There, if it's a branch, sometimes there'll be slices of branches uh, several feet long and big chunks that are, oh, uh, the size of small tomatoes. <laughs> so the, a lot of that material is the way that it is, that's the way we get it. And the surface area is quite small because they're large particles. The smaller the, 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 the units, the pieces of wood chips, the greater the surface area. And with increased surface area, meaning the smaller particles, there's a uh, there, there's more surface for all the microorganisms, the fungi and the nematodes, the, the microscopic nematodes and protozoa that, that break down the, uh, the fungi as well. All of those co components can work together and decompose those wood chips much faster if they're really small particles. Well, the materials we get here, for the most part, are quite large particles, so they don't break down that quickly. So what, I, what do I think? contributed to these wood chips breaking down in three years and let's say four months to the point where they're actually good garden soil, where they have the appropriate microbial communities in them, 
that wouldn't delay uh, the development, uh, slow the development of the plants that were growing. Everything from brassicas to uh, to the uh, eggplants, to, you name it, everything we grow here. So one of the things that I think contributed to the sped up rate is because the paths being relatively narrow. Now I don't use like some people using eight inch paths. Ours are probably about 14, 15 inches wide or, or 18 inches wide in, in many locations. So the compost being on either side of them and the compost basically being worked into the area because our, our permanent raised beds are teeming with earthworms, uh, red wiggler worms, all sorts of, and lots of microorganisms. And from both sides, those microorganisms get to work in our paths. So I think that that may speed things up. Now, the thing that made me think that was up in our third food forest area where we had been growing garlic for years in approximately six foot wide uh, permanent raised beds. And there's large uh, paths where I could drive heavy equipment in between where wood chips were, were laid down. Approximately probably as wide as 20 feet wide and the wood chips were put in at least two foot deep in some places probably as thick as three feet deep. And one of the things that I discovered in that area was when I'd go to, to drive over the area when the area, the wood chips hold so much moisture up in that area that uh, the tractor tires would start to sink into that area and I'd turn some of the material that was there. And one of the things I noticed was each time I'd come back and forth from turning the compost pile and I'd put a little more compost potentially sometimes on top of those beds, the compost would get mixed in with some of the wood chips, especially in the tr in the path area leading up to where the, to that area was. So there'd be wood chips that get spilled, there'd be compost getting spilled, not in a roadway, but in a path going to that section. And that area I noticed, gosh, it seemed like there were no more wood chips there, although I knew that there were wood chips there. But in less than two years time, you'd see only the large chunks of wood chips evident there. So that really made me think with the mixture of having compost with wood chips, that really sped up the process. Now I realize most people aren't going to, going to be taking and taking compost and, and spreading it into their wood chips. That wouldn't make much sense. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is the area over uh, where the where the high tunnel, the Gothic high tunnel will go, where I've talked about where the elderberry uh, plants are. I tried bringing the camera over there, but it's too windy over there right now. Um, in that area there, I've mentioned that I get loads of uh, beautiful uh, leaves each each fall. So the town that I live in, uh, those guys are really good about when the workers uh, rake up all the leaves in the cemeteries around here. Uh, the, the town goes in with a big loader, loads up their, their big uh, snow removal trucks, great big dump trucks, with all of these leaves in it, and they dump them here over in that area. And when I would dig down in that area, and now we're talking about wood chips that were six foot deep. Uh, you can drive over it. It doesn't, you don't get stuck in the area, but when you dig down into that area, the soil is actually broken down. So what do I think contributed to the sped up rate of wood chips decomposition over there? Well, each year, although I'd, I'd be putting in a foot to two feet of wood chips each season, all summer long, then, I, then in the fall, the, uh, the workers would come and, and deliver dump truck loads of leaves. I'd spread those leaves out over the surface, almost like the leaves had fallen on the forest floor, but I'd be doing it prob uh, probably about a foot thick throughout the whole area on top of the wood chips. And then in the springtime, most of those, those leaves would, would have been broken down significantly and I'd start putting wood chips on top of that. So that happened over a four year period and each year, just like in the, if you go into a forest or go into the woods, uh, in the fall time, you'll see the whole ground cover is just completely covered with, with leaves. You go back in the spring, late spring, all those leaves, there's, there's just remnants of the leaves there. Well, the, the fungal organisms work their way up, the mycelium work their way up and go into that area. 
and because of the leaves have, even though they're a rich carbon source, they don't have the nitrogen source of, com of compost, but because the great surface area, because the particles of leaves are, are, are so thin, the, the mycelium really break that down really rapidly. And then on those leaves, there's also a great deal of other bacteria and other microorganisms that, that are there to aid in the, in, the, in the process. So we're, in a sense, even though these, these leaves are being raked up in a cemetery and coming over in a big dump truck, it's a form of inoculation with rapidly decompose, decompostable material, material, decomposing material, uh, layers in between the layers of the wood chips. And that's my belief is that uh, because I've incorporated the leaves into the wood chips each year, that stuff is just broken down very rapidly. This season, because I wanted to speed up the rate of decomposition next to the fence itself, I went ahead and took a couple loads of manure, and that's straw, a lot of straw and hay from the farm, Purpose Farm, that I get it from, and I just laid that out right next to the fence line because I wanted to get as much nitrogen into those wood chips at, the, at, the, at that margin, right along the wood fence there, to start getting our living fence and hedgerows started over there. So th that's a couple of things. The other thing that I discovered over time was uh, one of the things that sped up the rate of wood chip decomposition was s some loads I would take like one load a year, bring it into the woods, into the, into the maple forest, and I'd spread out some wood chips about a foot and a half thick on the forest floor, and I'd let it have a season and then I would take that material and inoculate the wood chips in different locations. That worked. It didn't work as quickly as when I had the, the leaves going in. So I, I really think that the greater surface area as well. And a long time ago, probably four years ago, I, I talked about slow soil solutions. We use lots of our paper products. We have a big trash can in our garage when when it's paper towels or napkins or the insert rolls or, or cardboard products, small products that we get, all those paper products go into a bin. And then I take that bin and I bring it down into the woods and I spread it out in the woods. Now those, those paper products don't blow away because it's in the woods and that diffuses the forces of the winds. So, we, so the wind doesn't blow all these pieces of paper around. And this time of year, the leaves all fall down on it. Then we get these snow sections as well. And that really speeds up the rate of decomposition of, of that, those paper products. If I keep the paper products less than, let's say, eight inches thick along the forest floor, and they do get a, a good duff coating of the leaves on the surface of those as well, those materials tend to break down really rapidly. So the other thing I would say that's a possibility, if you don't have the leaf resources or you don't have manure or uh, waste products, certainly garden, uh, I'm sorry, kitchen scraps may, may break things down quickly as well. I haven't tried that. But the other thing is using cardboard and paper products. So if you, if you did lasagna layering of your wood chips, and put p paper products and cardboard in between the layers of wood chips, my, my theory is that because there's greater surface area, especially in that corrugated section between the, the outer and inner layers of wood chips, that will allow good air penetration into, into the system and bring in uh, the, the uh, fungal organisms and also all of those microscopic uh, protozoa, the uh, uh, fungal and bacterial consuming nematodes and so on and so forth. And I'll put a link in the upper right hand corner to a video that I posted be before about uh, the plant and soil succession. In that video I've talked about what the difference is between the microbial community in, um, in, in, a, in a recently disturbed piece of property to uh, what we would want for our garden areas as opposed to what we would want the microbial communities in our uh, food forests. And the gradual transition with the different microorganisms coming in to consume the various products that are there. So 
I hope this video has been somewhat valuable. If you have comments or questions, please leave them below. If you found this video of value, please give us a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And I certainly am enjoying all of the uh, contributions from everybody in the community as well. Thanks so much for watching, folks, and have a great day. Bye-bye now. Thank you.